come what may, I'll serve the Lord. Get your Bibles, if you will, and turn to the 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Looking at just two verses. Verse 21 and verse 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee unto seven times, but unto seventy times seven. That's a lot of forgiveness. Let's read that again. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Hmm. I want to spend the next few weeks, actually, talking about a, uh, a subject that is difficult, and that's the subject of forgiveness. I think that some have probably made themselves, made yourselves weary and maybe even sick, because you can become sick when you hold on to unforgiveness. But for this first week, uh, this first sermon, I, I want to talk to you about the, the benefits of forgiveness, what forgiveness uh, can do, what forgiveness has done. Pray with me. Father, we thank you now for this privilege that we have to speak a word into the lives of your people. I pray that you allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Some time ago, I, 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 I talked about this particular subject, and I want a time in the coming weeks to talk with you about this subject called forgiveness, and even talk about uh, how difficult it is and how difficult it can become. But I've come to realize that one of the reasons why uh, forgiveness is so difficult uh, is because oftentimes, and let's just be honest, we don't want to forgive. As a matter of fact, we, we want to forgive on our own terms. Amen, somebody. When you look at this, the irony of it all is, is that our salvation is totally based on forgiveness. You can't work enough for salvation. It's totally based on forgiveness of our sins. And we are told in the scriptures that, that all have sinned 
and sin is missing the mark. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this simply means that every one of us, man, woman, boy, and girl, has transgressed or done the opposite of what God intended for us to do. And the glory, it says, to all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As I said, um, uh, sin is missing the mark. And the glory of God means to exemplify his image and his likeness. We are told in, in the scripture, told in the book of Genesis, we were made in God's image and in his likeness. And this means that we were created with God's attributes. Give me a little bit of time. I just want to teach this. Uh, for we were created and made with his, his, his love, his peace, his joy, and his long suffering and his gentleness. And there, there are things that bring glory to God when we live out these attributes in our lives. I like the fact that the Bible says we all have fallen short. I like that because that means there's not one of us in here that can look down our noses at anybody else. I like the fact that, that not, not, not the fact that you did wrong and I did wrong, just, but just the fact that then you really can't point your finger at me. As a matter of fact, when you look at it, it's, it's, it's something because I, I like the fact that the Bible says we have all fallen short. And so if you look at Psalm 103 or in your leisure, look at Psalm 103, there is a statement about God's attitude and God's actions toward our shortcomings. God does not deal with us of our sins. I don't know about you, but, but, but I'm glad. Uh, maybe I'm the only one who's glad about that, but, but, but I, I'm so glad he doesn't deal with us according to our sins, but he deals with us according to mercy. I think if we, and, and, and my Sunday school teacher was talking about it this morning, I, I think if we really understood the, the mercy of God, we, we would be more about the business of wanting to see others come to serve the God who we claim can do anything but fail. Mm. I was expecting a, a, just a greater uh, amen there, but, but, but I didn't get it, so, so I'm going to move on from that. But I just think that if your God is so great, and, and if he can save somebody like you, you would want somebody else who you think is worse than you to want to come know a savior like you know. I, 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 I just think that's something that would happen. Well, well it's something because in, in that 103rd Psalm, there was a statement about God's attitude and God's actions. And in the 17th verse, it says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to, to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. When we read about the mercy of God in the scriptures, we are actually speaking about the forgiveness of God. Mercy is nothing more than the forgiveness. And I want to spend some time for, for these next few weeks, and I think it's necessary, and, 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 and I've heard the Lord speak to me very clearly in, in, my, in my prayer time to then, to then talk about this forgiveness piece. Uh, but, 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 but I want to spend some time teaching and preaching about the benefits of forgiveness. And I think that what is ironic is, is that this, this, this is the Sunday which has been set aside to observe Lord's Supper. And the preparation for Lord's Supper requires self-examination. And I submit to you that, that many are coming to the sacred table of communion, but yet harbor unforgiveness in their hearts. Oh my goodness, I, I, I didn't tread it on something now. Oh, I need to holler, Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come. Lord, unforgiveness can cause you. <laughs> You'll get that when you get home. Unforgiveness can cause sickness that doctors can't find a remedy for. Amen. Have you ever uh, been to the doctor and trying to tell him what you're feeling and what you're experiencing and, and, and he just has no remedy? He might say, well, just rest. But, but, but unforgiveness can cause a sickness that doctors can't find a remedy for, nor can they give you a diagnosis. Unforgiveness can destroy a family. 
Amen, somebody. Yet forgiveness can bring healing and bring restoration. Well, if there was anyone in the scriptures who, who showed his human side, and let me get to this quickly because I, 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 I want you to get this, that if there's anyone who showed his human side in the scriptures, it was Peter. Peter is, is, is one who most of us can relate to. He, he wasn't afraid to ask the tough questions. And then if you got on his bad side, uh, he didn't hold his tongue. Matter of fact, stuff rolled off his tongue that shouldn't have rolled off his tongue. Amen. Can, can, can anybody identify with, with Peter? <laughs> it's interesting be, because he's at a place now where he was not afraid to show his emotions. Now, we don't know what prompted Peter to ask this question as recorded in Matthew 8, 18. Uh, but, but, but something must have transpired that had happened over and over again by the same person for Peter to ask this question. Now, it appears that Peter is trying all he knows how to live according to what Jesus had been teaching him. But something happened. Somebody say something happened. Something happened that caused him to be fed up with somebody or somebody's behavior. Have you ever been fed up? Peter had reached up. I don't know what this other person, brother or sister, had done, but Peter was fed up with something that had transpired. It appeared that Peter's problem was more than just a disagreement. In my mind, I think that Peter was being convicted by the teachings of the Word of God. He, he was probably holding on to some unforgiveness. And I think this is what Paul was talking about when he said the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of those of the thought and intent of the heart. It is impossible to stay around the Word and not feel convicted. Oh, i got to say that again. It's impossible to stay around the Word and not feel convicted convicted. Amen. Well, I, I, I've always been amazed. Uh, 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 some time ago, I spoke to you from, from, from the thought of the danger of drifting several years ago. And the problem that exists here is when you are no longer convicted by the Word, then you, have, then you are in a falling away situation. And I've always been amazed at how the Word of God can be both comforting and be convicting. Mm. And the disturbing side of this is many are looking for the Word of God to comfort them. Many are looking to the Word of God to confirm something that you've been praying about. But I submit to you on this, on this morning, uh, it is the convicting Word that will bring survival in this day. When you look at this, history says that, that the Jewish rabbis, had laid down some guidelines concerning how to deal with people who habitually offend you. Now, it's not like you do now. You, you just smack them and, they, and whatever. But that's, that's, that's not how they dealt with it back then. Uh, uh, now we do some other things, but that's not how they dealt with it back then. They laid down some guidelines on how to deal with folk who, who, uh, who habitually offend you. They said to forgive a person three times was adequate. Hmm. Peter knew that, that, that what Jesus was teaching them went beyond three, three times. And Peter's concern was, how far past this am I supposed to go? Has anybody ever had anybody ever offend you at least three times? <laughs> Peter wanted to know, how, how far do I go past the three times. Peter's concern was how far past these three should a person go. Peter felt he would impress Jesus by going beyond what the Jewish rabbis were teaching. He thought he would impress Jesus and so and so it's something because what implying with his question to Jesus was seven times ought to be enough. Amen. Seven times. Oh, Jesus now look. Seven times ought to be enough. How many times do I allow them to walk on me? 
Amen. How many times can I just speak in tongue and walk off? How many times, Jesus, do I have to bite my tongue and act like it didn't happen? Am I there yet? I'm on my way. How many times? How, how many times, Jesus, do I have to stay saved? Ooh. Amen. How many times do, do I have to hear my own nature in the back of my head? How many times? And look at somebody ask them, how many times? Uh, this, 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 this may not be what you came to hear today, but I, I declare to you that, that many of us are stuck because we won't forgive. Uh-oh. And we really thought that out of sight meant out of mind. Or out of mind meant out of sight, whatever that thing goes. But we found out that sometimes you get by yourself and you start thinking about what happened to you. And you get more mad, more mad, more mad. Thinking about what somebody has done to you. Well, there's something here. Because there are three benefits, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to sit down. There, there are three benefits that I want us to consider today concerning for, forgiveness. One is forgiveness reveals something. Forgiveness, number two, for, forgiveness is demanding. And here's the good one. Forgiveness is liberating. Forgiveness will set you free. Amen, somebody. There are, there, there are some benefits. So now, forgiveness is revealing, it is demanding, and it is liberating. And, and so when you look at it revealing, forgiveness is not easy because what forgiveness is saying is that even though you are the innocent person, you are willing to let the guilty person go free. Well, I'm not getting much help. Oh, my God. Even though you are the guilty person, I'm sorry, even though you, you are the innocent person, you are willing to let the guilty person go free. Well, that's not in our, but see, that's, that's not in our makeup. That's, uh, we, we, be, because I want to see you hurt as much as you hurt me. Oh, bless his name. I want to see you cry as much as I cry. But a true sign of forgiveness. And so it's something because forgiveness reveals the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost operating in your life. You want to have a barometer, have a measuring rod as the, as the, as, as to the Holy Spirit operating in your life? Have to deal with a forgiving situation. Uh, then you're going to find out I'm not all that I thought I was. Amen. So this is a tough subject to preach from, saints. We're going to find out we're not. Some, some are still holding people in prison because of what they did. Amen. And some of them have gone on about their business. I'm at the club. <laughs> Bucking and shaking. And you home thinking about what they did. Oh, my God. Would you look at somebody and say, get free, get free. There's too much life ahead of you for you to hold on to stuff that was done to you in 62. My God. Too much stuff. Too much stuff. Too much stuff. Some of you have passed that stuff on even to your children. Uh, they don't talk to folk because you mad at folk. Preach it here, White. All right, since you asked me to. Passed all that unforgiveness on to your children and to family members and anybody who will listen to you. Now they looking cross-eyed at their folk and folk don't know why they looking Google-eyed at you. You ain't done nothing to them. It's something somebody else told them that they don't want to forgive for. My God, help me here today. But there's some benefits to forgiveness. My God. You'll get your smile back if you learn how to forgive. You'll get your joy back if you learn how to forgive. Some folk have made up your minds, I ain't going to forgive them until I'm ready. Do you not know you'll never be ready? 
Because every time you see them, you'll see them in the mall and lose your spirit to shop. That might be good, I don't know. <laughs> you might see them in, in the supermarket and, and decide to go down another aisle. Woo. Unforgiveness can make you sick. Oh, bless his name. Let, let me get through, through this. For it reveals the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives. It reveals the fact that you have been transformed by the Holy Ghost. It reveals that you understand the forgiving power of God in his forgiveness toward you without condition. God forgave you and I with no strings attached. Oh, bless his name. We're living in a day now where an apology is not even enough. Somebody say, I'm sorry, what else you want after sorry? You want my firstborn now? What, what, what comes after I'm sorry? Forgive me, what, what comes after that? I'll think about it. Well, you're, gonna, you're a little weird. Because if you're walking with God, help me here, Holy Ghost, and you've got the power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life, you don't have to think about forgiving somebody. If Jesus ever decided to treat us like we treat each other, Lord, for, 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 forgive me, I'll think about it. Give me some time. I, I need some time. No, no. He forgave us the moment we, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm glad, I'm glad he has amnesia. I'm glad he threw my sins into a sea. Never to remember. I'm, I'm so glad that the moment I asked him, he forgave me. Uh-oh. When I knelt by my bedside last night, I said, God, forgive me of every sin, every failure, every shortcoming stuff I can't even think about. God, for, for, forgive me of those presumptuous stuff, that stuff I assumed. Oh, my God. I think that your relationships might be much better if you learn how to forgive. Look at somebody say, just let it go. You need the spirit of forgiveness. Forgiveness says, I release you without condition. Oh, bless the Jesus said that, Jesus said something that set the tone for the spirit of forgiveness. After he told Peter that forgiveness goes beyond seven times, but 70 times seven, he then says, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Mm. In other words, he is saying, if you want to understand true forgiveness, look at the kingdom of God. He goes on to speak a parable about a servant who owed the king 10,000 talents. Matter of fact, that 10,000 talents comes out to be about $12 million in this day. And the point that Jesus was trying to make was that the debt, was, that, that the debt we owe God is beyond the possibility of payment. Oh, my. I don't know about you, I, that God looks beyond faults and sees needs. I'm glad that even being damaged on the wheel, he still forgave me. I'm glad that even sinning after being saved. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Sinning after speaking in tongue. Uh you see, we've got to get out of this mentality that we've never done anything wrong since I come to Jesus. And let this younger generation know that because of our human frailties, there is the possibility of messing up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> there is the good chance of messing up so so now when you look at this something because the Bible says that the king demanded that the man and his family be sold into slavery as payment for their debt but when the man begged the king for patience the king had compassion on the man and canceled his debt well the king's forgiveness was based on the man's attitude I'm gonna wrap this up I'm gonna wrap this up because it was based on the man's attitude it's something here because when I, when I looked at this, Jesus said, he compares this to the kingdom of heaven. 
the magnitude of God's forgiveness toward us. He didn't wait for us to even ask for forgiveness. The Bible says, but God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, oh God, I like that. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Forgiveness not only re reveals the grace of God, but it also reveals the level of our walk with God. I don't know why I'm preaching this. But secondly, secondly, forgiveness is demanding. It demands that once we understand the power of God's for forgiveness toward us, then we are to show that same forgiveness toward those who have offended us. The Bible says that after that servant had been forgiven, he went out from the presence of the king. It was easy for him to forget. He changed when it came to him forgiving somebody else. Well, the Bible says that this same man saw someone who owed him some money. Matter of fact, owed him a hundred dineros, which is about two, which is only about twenty dollars. He demanded that he be paid. The Bible says that the, that the poor man begged for mercy and patience, but the servant refused to show forgiveness and mercy, and he put the man in prison until he was satisfied. Listen, when God tells us to forgive, he is telling us to look at the person through the eyes of the Spirit. Oh, bless his name. Do you not know what it cost you, saints of God, to hold on to unforgiveness? The cost. Some have made themselves sick because I'm so hurt from what they did. Some of our hurt has been misunderstandings, but we take them and we hold on to them. And now here's the key. And then we try to praise God over top of it. And then we wonder why, 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 why prayers are not being asked. We wonder why bodies are not being healed. Oh, bless his name. Well, it's something here. Because the Bible says that the man begged for mercy. Finally, forgiveness is liberating. It's liberating. When you forgive someone who has offended you, you set them free. And listen to this and you set yourself free. Oh, I gotta say it again. When you forgive somebody, you set them free. But what's even more important is you set yourself free. And the truth of the matter is, I need the freedom more than you need the freedom. <laughs> Look at somebody say, I, I need the freedom more than you need the freedom. When you forgive them, when you set them free, you set yourself free. When you refuse to forgive, you open yourself up to a spiritual attack. Oh, bless his name. And that spiritual attack attacks your peace and your joy. Oh, I don't know if you're waiting on me to get excited and and sweat out my suit. I just wanted to instruct you today. Too many of us are walking around with unforgiveness. True story. I had a person years ago. Said that they were still upset with a former pastor from 30 years ago. And not that the pastor had done anything wrong to them, took it the wrong way. The pastor's passed away. And this person, 30 years later, sitting in front of my desk in the old church, still struggling. with not forgiving that pastor. 30 years. Imagine the burden of carrying for all that time 
unforgiveness. I'm not going to put you on the spot today to raise your hand if you're carrying that. That's, that's not the point of this message today. That's not the point of this instruction for these next few weeks. When God tells me to deal with a series of sermons on a subject, I know he's after something. There's unforgiveness. And the only way to move forward is to forgive. Look at somebody on either side and just tell them, let them go. Let them go. Every time you think about them, you get angry. And I say this because I'm not going to downplay it. And you might have a right to be angry. Or you might have a reason to, to be angry. But if the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit is operating in your life, and this is that common denominator, this is, this is what keeps you and I from going off the deep end, is the Holy Spirit. Because if God ever withdrew his spirit from us, You'd be on the 6 o'clock news and 11. <laughs> Facebook, Nosebook, everything. If God ever withdrew his spirit. Do you not know it's nothing but the grace of God that keeps you and I from acting like some of the things we see on the news? Y'all ain't saying much now. <laughs> I know you're thinking that, that you're so educated and, and I'll never act like, oh, there's some multi-millionaires doing stuff. I've come to tell you, finally, when you forgive the one who offended you, it sets them free and set you free. It's liberating. And when you refuse to forgive, you open yourself up to spiritual attack. And when you refuse to forgive, you become critical about everything. Most times when you deal with people that are critical about everything, there's something behind that. Oh, yes, it is. Most times when you find folk who can't get along with anybody, there's something behind that. Amen, somebody. Most times when you find folk who have difficulty with authority, there's something behind it. And we've got to be delivered. And we've got to be set free. Well, I wanted to know How many times, God? Jesus, how many times now? Because, because if they say one more thing to me, Jesus, I'm going to take off my robe. I don't know if they have Vaseline, but I'm going to get some olive oil and put it on. I'm going to put on my sandals that, that, that have traction. And we're going to throw down. How many times, Jesus, how many times do I have to accept this? In his mind, he said, you know, the law from the rabbis says three is enough. After three, knock them out. But Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm coming be, because I was a recipient of of the leftovers from the two fish and five loaves of bread, and, and I know you're all powerful, so how about seven, Jesus? Did seven do it? Would seven, is seven okay? I want to know, is seven good enough be, because he's on six now? And if he follows how he's been acting, seven's coming. And I just want to be prepared <clears throat> to go with him. I, I, I just want to be prepared. So if, seven, if seven's good, I'll get ready. 
Jesus said, sorry to burst your bubble, Peter. It's not just seven. Seventy times seven. Help me, math teachers. 144,000? Huh? 490. Listen, listen, listen. And let me help you out. Aaron, let me help you. Daily. Oh, my God. Every day. 398. 487. Oh, it's going to work today. 489. 490. Clock strikes 1201. Lord, another day. I got to forgive them again. Yes. You want to know why? Because it's really for your healing. Because God knows there's something in us that he's trying to work out. Anger issues. Anger issues. It's something when you find folk that don't get along with nobody. After a while, they can't be other people. After a while, it can't be other people. Now, you don't get along with anybody? You don't even get along with Jesus. I know I'm making light of it. But forgiveness is liberating. Forgiveness will set you free. What Jesus was telling Peter is Peter, you are never justified to hold on to unforgiveness. I will never honor unforgiveness. Because when you think of the that Jesus went through to forgive us, when you think of what it took to hang there on a cross and give his life for you and I. That's why I was telling someone just the other day, and, and, and I watched it again, somebody said it last night on one of the gospel stations, said, you want to know what's going to turn or stop people from entering heaven? It's not really a lot of the stuff that we think it is. Here is scripture, here's Bible. What's going to stop people from getting to heaven is rejection of Jesus Christ. Didn't know that. Sounds like y'all didn't, didn't, didn't know that. No, we, 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 we thought if your to toes stick out your shoes, then that means that no, or your, or, or your heel is out, or you wear your da 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 you, No, no, no. Rejection of Jesus Christ. That's what his whole coming was about. They rejected him. That's why they crucified him. They rejected him. But I declare to you today, there's some benefits to unforgiveness, to for forgiveness. Stand with me. I'm done. Stand with me. Stand with me. If you didn't shout off of that choir song, you're not going to shout now. I'm finding that one of the most difficult things that a pastor has to deal with or has to contend with is teaching the people. We're a people who, who, like, who like noise. Let, the, let Brother Mark go down that bass right now and Brother Marcus follow him on them drums and John jump onto the key or whatever. And, and our heads will start moving. Start bopping. It. That's, it's just something that's in us. But to sit and to be taught is difficult. There was a saying, there was a saying, and, and I don't know how true it is, but it said if you, if you wanted to keep, keep something away from a a man of color. It said, hide in a book.
because we won't read. The Bible says this, we, we, we err for lack of knowledge. If you don't know what the word says about forgiveness and unforgiveness and anger, how, 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 how will we get past it? We'll think it's all right to treat our brother and sister terrible. We'll think it's all right. Question came up, and I'm gonna make this, 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 this altar call, but the question came up in Sunday school class today. Not in reference to, out of all these years, maybe with even the, just the last year, uh, how, how many could really say that you won a soul to Christ in the last year? And then the question came up by the, one, of the, one of the students said, uh, um, basically was saying, will that, will God hold us accountable? I said, oh, of course. Oh yeah, of course he will. Just go to Matthew 25, verse, verse 14 to about verse 30, about the talents. And after he took, after that last one with the one talent, hid his talent and didn't do anything with it, thought it would please the master, the master said, take it from him. And wait, wait, then it says, and cast him into outer darkness. Wow. Oh, there's going to be some accountability. See, I'm, I'm, I'm talking a subject now that most don't want to hear. But I have a responsibility to give you the whole word of God. And I could, I could go straight to prosperity if, if you want. But that's not going to help you when your boat don't, while you're sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away. <laughs> Ain't going to help you. What you need is, I need to know that there's a God of comfort while I'm sitting on the dock of the bay. watching tide after tide roll away. There might be one in, in here right now, first of all. I want to tell you that the Lord forgave you and will forgive you the moment you ask him. You don't have to continue in sin. You don't have to be so tied to a person or even tied to a relationship that you can't say yes to God. My plea is to you first. But God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My second plea is for that one today. Notice I said that, that one, and it's all right. Because most of y'all are going to think about this after you leave here. But that one today, who's having a problem with forgiveness. And it's wrecked some relationships. It's caused some issues in your life. I'm, I'm wondering if you'll be honest enough to say, Pastor, I need help. Because I want to do God's will. I want to serve God with all my heart. But I've got some issues in my tissues with forgiveness. I've been holding folk in prison, Pastor, a long time. I refuse. Some folk, I refuse to forgive them. Watch the news sometime when, when, when folk have come out of court and after a person's been sentenced for this or whatever, case, and they talk to the family of the person who got killed and said, what's your thoughts? Said, I, I'll never forgive. Have you heard about I'll never forgive them. Then they might say, God have mercy on their soul. Well, that's kind of a contradiction. There are some of you standing here right now that have even said, I'll never forgive them. But your pride won't let you move right now. You're going to wait for general prayer. <laughs> pride won't let you move. But I want to tell you now, every step you take toward this altar right now is liberating. Liberating. It's liberating. Every step I make, it's liberating. 
Every step I make toward this altar, I'm being liberated. Glory. Every step I make, my mind's getting clear now. I'm letting this one out of jail and that one out of jail and I'm letting that one go and this one go. I'm letting that go from years ago. I'm letting that go from my childhood. I'm letting it all go because there's some benefits to forgiveness. That's the altar's open for you right now. Meet me here. I ain't mad at you. I want to celebrate with you. Tired of hating. We want to celebrate now. The altar's open for you right now. Sing it through one time, choir. We're going to pray. And for those of you that want general prayer, you can come too. You can come now. It's up to you. I need you to I'm holding on to stuff. I'm holding on to stuff that I shouldn't hold on to. Stuff that's just stunning my growth. People, listen, can I say this before we pray? There are some people that are difficult to forgive. Amen. Because they'll do it again. But you can't worry about their history. You need to be concerned about your future. And if you really want God to use you, because life goes on after that situation. Life goes on after this situation. And if I really want God to use me, I've got to let stuff go. I'm tired of going to the doctor about these headaches and they can't not sit, can find anything that's wrong with me. Bottom line is, let's be honest, you know what's wrong with you. I ain't going to let them experiment on me. I, I, I know what's wrong. I, I, I hate her. <laughs> and the doctor has medication for hate. <laughs> I hate him. And there's no medication for hate. I wish he was dead and there's no medication. Now, I, I sound like I'm, I'm, I'm jesting with you, but these are real issues. And you and I claim to serve the true and the living God. The all-powerful God, the all-knowing God, we claim to serve. If he's all that, if he's the deliverer of your soul, if he's your keeper, if he's your provider, then why not release it and give it to him? And finally get a good night's rest. Finally get some sleep. Finally be able to walk up to them, walk by them, and speak to them genuinely. Because you know something? I've forgiven you. And I'm free. Oh my, it may take me a little while to get my hair straight, but I'm free. <laughs> I may only have one nail colored right now, but I, I got four more fingers and four more tries. I'm free. I'm free. Altar's open for anyone else that wants to come for prayer or come and stand for somebody else. It's up to you. Come now to before we pray. Oh, bless his name. Bow those heads with This being the Sunday, this being the Sunday of yes, Lord's yes, Supper, yes, yes, God. what a better time to clean the house. 
that nothing will hinder us. That nothing will hinder us from coming to this table. Father, in the name of your son Jesus, again, I thank you for the foolishness of preaching. I thank you, God, because you are after something. I thank you for the instruction today. I thank you for speaking to our inner need today. I thank you, God, because there's a freedom taking place today. Right before our very eyes, somebody is being set free today, God. Hallelujah. Someone accepting your liberating power that they don't have to go another moment with unforgiveness. Somebody, God, is being released even right now. That they don't have to go another moment, my God, holding on to stuff of the past. In the name of Jesus. Father, set that daughter free today. Set that son free today, God. That one, God, that's been struggling, my God, with one issue after another. Years of unforgiveness. Years of holding on to things. Set them free, I pray. In the name of Jesus. God, for your glory, let this be that time that you're releasing them as they let go of the hurt, as they let go of the pain, as they let go of the unforgiveness. Stretch out your hand, God. Touch your people right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, as we examine ourselves and prepare Oh, to receive the sacraments today. God, help us to search ourselves. Help us to take inventory that we're not holding on to things that would hinder us from progressing the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, God. Some things we cannot say with our lips, God, but you hear our hearts cry today. Oh, God, some things hurt to say it, but you hear our hearts cry today. In the name of Jesus, some things pain us to say it, but you hear our hearts cry. Oh, God, go by past. Heal us from the things we held on to. Heal us from the unforgiveness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Heal us, my God. Heal that sister. Heal that mother. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. That's been through a separation, been through a divorce. Heal that man, my God. Been through a divorce, been through separation. Heal them, I pray, my God. Release them from it, my God. In the name of Jesus, I, I bind the hand of the enemy that's held them in prison all these years. Deliver them. Set them free, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Forgive that daughter, forgive that son that stepped outside of your will. Forgive them, I pray. Release them in the name of Jesus. Send your liberating power. Send your liberating power, God, into this place. Send your liberating power, my God. Nothing will hinder a breakthrough. Uh, nothing will hinder setting that daughter free. Nothing will hinder setting that son. Nothing will hinder, my God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, heal the relationship. Uh, heal the family. Heal the household. Uh, heal the daughter. Heal the son. In the name of Jesus. Uh, glory to God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Heal, my God. Heal and deliver. In this place, go back years and set us free, God. God, hallelujah. Go back generations and set us free. In the name of Jesus, break every generational bond, every generational curse, every generational issue. Destroy it from the very root, my God. That it not affect the next generation. Destroy it from the root, my God. In the name of Jesus, send a spirit of forgiveness 
into the household. Send a spirit of forgiveness into the family now. Send a spirit of forgiveness into the marriage in the name of Jesus. For their benefits to forgiveness. It's liberating. It will set you free. Thank you for the freedom now, God. Come on, take about 60 seconds. Talk to him for yourself right there. Come on, talk to him for yourself. 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 Come on, right there. Come on, his liberating power. His liberating power. You're not the only one. There are several in here. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. My God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, I didn't mean to stir up old feelings, but my God, if it meant to set you free, oh, then I don't apologize for stirring it up. For he who the Son sets free, glory to God, he who the Son sets free, no matter what you've been through, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Is free indeed. Now walk in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Listen, and be not entangled again with a yoke, a bondage. Unforgiveness is a yoke. It bounds you. It bounds you. And it hurts nobody else but you. You not letting go hurts you. My God, my God. You can walk around smiling all you want to, but behind that smile is unforgiveness. And Jesus said, since I forgave you, you must forgive. Jesus, how many times should a brother offend us or a sister offend us? How many times? Is seven okay? No. Many times is necessary. That's what it really means. As many times as it calls for. He said, because I freed you, you must be willing to free somebody else. Thank you, God. Seal it with somebody before you go back to your seats. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Prepare your hearts now that we might serve you, Lord's Supper. Choir can come down. Sister Delisa, choir can come down. As you prepare to serve you, Lord's Supper, for those of you that may have come in after the time of giving, we pray that you came with the desire to give. If you would want to get the ushers' attention, you can just hand the ushers will come and we'll take care of that with you. We appreciate that. Oh, bless us. I need you to survive. Bless his name. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Unforgiveness is powerful. It's powerful. Now we can do this very easily. Folk that are sitting on the far left, over this on the far left, just come on into the center section. Folk on the far right, come on into the center section. We'll do this very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. I'll say it again, far, people on my far left, come into this section here. People on my far right, if you come into this section here, we'll serve everybody all the same time. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Anthony. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There There is power power in the the blood, power power in the the blood. blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, Oh, there there is power, power, wonder working in the blood of the land oh there is power power wonder working power in the precious land as we're all standing at-